Okay, hello all you crazy people out there. My name is Michael. I like wizards and dragons and making games, and let's make some games. Welcome back to Tower Defense and Game Maker in 3D. So in the last couple of videos, I, I did a little bit of work optimizing the game to make it run a little better, and um, in particular, trying to make it play on at acceptable frame rates on the Raspberry Pi, which I like to think I accomplished, um, semi-surprisingly. And today we're going to be squarely back in the realm of gameplay. Today we are going to be uh, implementing a pause menu. Uh, currently, there is kind of sort of already a pause menu in the game in the form of the debug menu, and I've been doing that whenever I want to freeze gameplay and, um, and like get a closer look at something without the game trying to like progress and the bugs getting to the end of the track and making me die. And we're going to be piggybacking off of that for an actual pause menu that is actually like what you see when you pause the game. And, uh, let's start by uh, going up, where was I? I think I, I think I passed out. I think I was uh, already there when I started the video. We are going to be adding a third gameplay mode, which is paused. And let's see, I'm going to go into the, into the update method. And in gameplay mode, we're gonna say if keyboard check pressed, not that it really matters because this is only gonna really run once. Uh, VK underscore escape, then uh, we can say gameplay mode is going to equal game modes dot paused, and we can uh, we can return from the update the update method uh, at this point because we don't need to process the rest of the update uh, loop, the update step. Now, uh, we're going to have to do a little bit to make this actually do anything. If I run the game now, it'll pause the game, but it will, if I'm looking at this correctly, still look like the editor because um, it's, it's not checking. The editor is not checking to see if gameplay mode equals equals the editor. Um, it's just checking to see if it's, uh, if it's not like regular gameplay, and I would like to change that uh, because um, just in case in the future, for example, I want to add... Uh, more more gameplay modes uh, For whatever reason This really might become a switch statement instead of an if else, but uh, when we've just got uh, a small number of, of cases it's, it's probably fine um, Oh, that should be else if and also else if I was wondering why this thing was screaming at me uh, And that will make the errors go away and I believe down at the bottom I probably in the render method did the same thing uh, gameplay mode equals equals the editor. Where's the end of that block? Oh no, where is the, um... It's a little bit different than it seems. Oh, it would be in the, in the, in the UI. Okay. If gameplay mode equals equals gameplay else without another, uh, if condition here. We're going to be, uh... We're going to be rendering the editor. Okay, so again, else if, and again, uh, paused. Okay, and we can fill these two in. So now if, I, now if I run the game, and if I immediately hit the escape key, uh, the game will pause, and we will basically not see any UI, which is, I think, what I want. All right, let me send in a few things. And if I hit the escape key, then we can still move around, which is also probably honestly not what we want, but we can deal. Um, the game is not moving. Nothing's updating. Thing, everything is rendering. Everything is rendering correctly. Uh, there is no UI. I cannot click on the world and like spawn an object or anything like that as I could in the editor. That's fine. Let me commit a change. Added a pause state. Okay. And... Now we can get started on um, on actually having something happen here. I don't think I'm looking for. Uh, I recently turned off the like collapse code around functions setting in Game Maker, and I'm now starting to regret that, considering how big some of these functions are. But I can collapse the editor certainly. Uh, where is that? Uh, where is moving around? Camera update. Camera update handles moving around. I'm not offended by being able to move the camera around when the game is paused or anything like that. Although I don't think it's especially useful. I could say I could throw camera update in either um, gameplay mode or editor mode, and this would 
this would cause the camera to only be able to be moved and update um, when you're not like in a pause menu. Um, I kind of feel like it would be like good practice to do that. So I can move the camera around now, I can move the camera around now, and I, I cannot move the camera now, we, the game is paused. Uh, I Like I said, I, I wouldn't be too offended if you can move the camera around on the pause menu, but I don't think it's really that useful, so we'll leave it like that for now. Next, uh, let's go into the into the room, which we are using, and let us create ourselves a nice uh, UI layer. And... How do you create a layer? What are what are layers? Uh, game maker instances. Uh, we can give this a give this a nice name. UI game pause menu. Sure, we can call it that. And we can make it look something like um something like the other UI. And I wish you could like. I guess you can. <clears throat> you can have a text layer, can't you? Can you have a text layer? In game, in game maker, none of, the, none of these look like text layers. All right, whatever. Anyway, we can drag in a UI block raycast, and this can be uh, sort of the background for a UI. I don't think that's centered. Is that centered? Uh, let's move it over one. That might be centered. And we can drag in a UI uh, UI text. And can I like? Can I scale you? Game maker, are we being weird? We are. Uh, we can put on some text. This can have there. We go. We can. Uh, we can just give that text a little label. This is paused. Paused game. And now I, I'm going to need to be able to activate that. Let me collapse the room editor. No, go away. Uh, I'm going to need to be able to activate that. And, uh, and draw it and such. And that is going to be accomplished with um, something similar to this. Player cursor over UI, does that even matter right now? Probably not. I'll, I'll, uh, I'll set that variable anyway uh, to, indicate, to like end the cursor over UI processing or whatever. Um, UI game, uh, UI game, oh my god. UI game pause menu. Like that. And do I not want active GUI layer? Because that's like, that's the menu, the context menu that appears when you select a tower, right? So I don't want that now, I think. We should be good. I pause the game. Okay, cool. We got text on the screen appearing. This is pause game. That's fun. All right, I do not need this. Uh, we we do not need that. And this is uh, this is going to handle all of the UI rendering. Will it? For now, it'll handle all the UI rendering. Later on, I do want like a settings menu and and that sort of thing, so that you can change game settings. And um, that would be uh, that would be a, a a different pause menu of sorts. But for now, this is going to work. Uh, we can add some buttons. That is not the right layer, apparently. Uh, cancel. We can add some buttons and uh, let's say resume. What did I, what are what are buttons that you often see in a pause menu? Um, I'm going to, even though I'm not going to implement them now, uh, settings, uh, I, I'm thinking like restart, a restart button and probably a quit button. I'm not sure if I would have separate buttons for uh, quit to quit to desktop and quit to main menu, but for now, uh, we can do that. For now, I guess it can be uh, it can be quit to desktop because uh, later on I will implement the main menu probably in the next couple of videos. Uh, so what do I want to override for a? Uh, uh, what sort of like on click methods do I want to implement for for these buttons? Uh, what are what does that look like? All right, so it's just on click equals function. Okay, uh, this will be the easiest. This can be uh, creation code. On click is going to equal function, and I'm just going to game end myself out of here. Uh, the uh, the variables, the button name is going to be quit game. So we're going to have a nice quit button now, and it should it should work. 
right? I do need to optimize the load time for this because we are uh, we are loading a lot of data, and we we don't need a lot of it. And I should probably think about doing something about that. Uh, quit game, and when I when I click the button, it quits the game. Okay, that feels like a commit. Added a pause menu UI layer plus quit game button. I guess technically the quit game button would be different from um, from the from the pause menu itself, like this thing here, the UI as far as commit messages go. But uh, we will uh, we'll pretend they're one and the same. Okay, this one is going to have the creation code of resume. Um, on click equals function. And this can be game dot gameplay mode equals, uh, what is it? Game modes dot gameplay. This is just going to be ending the quit state. And the, uh, the variable, the text that we're going to be showing is going to be resume. Okay. That one's also easy enough. I'm not going to be implementing, um, like settings now. I think I said that earlier. I'm not going to be implementing settings now. Uh, we can send some waves in. We can pause the game. Resume is going to resume the game. Everything is back to normal. Um, restart. I would like to implement a restart button. However, so first, Resume game button. First, we can do that. Uh, this one is going to be restart. Also, before I forget, let me go into... Yeah, okay, I'm selecting the right one. Uh, I'm going to go into the variables menu for this one and just change this text to settings. Just so that I remember what I want it to be next time I sit down to record. I can change the order that variables are listed in the variables menu. That's neat. Uh, so that I remember what I want that to be next time I sit down to record. And um, this can be restart. Don't know if I need to hit enter um, when, I, uh, when I change a variable definition, but I do it anyway. Anyway, on click, it's going to equal function. And this is going to simply invoke game dot. I'm going to I'm going to create myself a method later that that's uh, that's reset. All right, that is going to be the pause menu. I am going to go somewhere up to the top of this function where everything is initialized and uh, and say reset equals function and this will be implemented later. For now, show message reset the game. And that's really going to be the other half of this video. This has not taken long at all, which makes me happy. I like it when stuff takes less time than I think it will. Uh, let me um, pause the game. Oh, I, I can't uh, I can't unpause it with the escape key yet, so I will resume the game just because I can. Uh, settings doesn't do anything. Quit. I will not be clicking on that. Uh, I should have a yes no confirmation on quit eventually, just in case someone you know clicks it by accident. And restart should uh, show a message that says reset the game. Okay. Wonderful. Uh, reset button. Not yet implemented. <clears throat> okay. How is this going to work? So certain things are going to need to be cleaned up. We don't want to reload the entire level, uh, but we will want to, we will want to uh, reset the wave. So how can I um, send in wave? What happens there? All right, first, I need to group together all of the variables which are related to gameplay. Uh, that's going to mean things such as, like, DS list clearing wave active. That's going to mean things such as resetting all these variables. Um, things like path nodes, entities, um, foes, towers. Okay. Uh, towers and stuff do not have a destroy method, do they? Game entities, entity tower. Did I give everything a destroy method? I did. Okay. Not all of them really do anything interesting. This just removes them from the list. And, um... Alright. 
Uh, entities, foes, towers. I'm going to iterate over all foes and all towers and um, and destroy them. And then I'll deal so let's clear them for good measure. Uh, let's see. That'll be a start. So let's comment that out for now. For var i equals zero. I is less than ds list size all foes i plus plus. And this is something that certainly could be optimized later. All foes index i dot destroy. Uh, same thing for towers. All towers. Like that. And then for good measure, like I said, DS list clear. And this should uh, this should delete all foes and all towers from the game. So I'm just gonna play the game a little bit and then hit the restart button. Um, let's see. We're going to send some things in. I'm going to plant a tower. Uh, let's plant another one just for fun. Pause the game, restart, and you guys are still there. All right. Foes did not get destroyed. And you should have. Are you still in like the entity list or something? Did I override destroy and not like call the super class version? I think I did. All entities. That's weird. This should be, um, we should still be able to be removed from the, uh, from the all entities list. Okay. Um, would it be a, like a bad idea? Is it a bad idea to have foes in the entity list? Is that like a design decision that I'm regretting? Also, why are towers clear but foes aren't? Because towers are treated very much, uh, very similarly. Okay, that's because... I guess I'm not overriding the destroy method. Interesting. Is there another list that foes live in? Have I spaghettified my code to this degree? Like, I have a nagging suspicion that I should be iterating over this list backwards because I am technically removing stuff from it um, at the same time as iterating over it. And that is oftentimes a recipe for disaster. I is going to be DS list size minus one. I is going to be greater than or equal to zero. Then I minus minus. I don't know if this is the, the problem that I'm, that I'm seeing. I actually would think I would be expecting other problems um, if this was if there was if this was it but we'll see uh, let's send in a couple uh, restart okay that did actually get rid of them very nice uh, also on restart we should probably gameplay mode equals equals game mode stop gameplay okay so we're getting rid of it uh, we've cleared all the uh, we've cleared all the enemies and is that Again, equals equals. Uh, we've cleared all the enemies. We've cleared all the towers. We should be... Let me see. Uh, wave countdown should be set back to this. Wave remain should be false. Uh, what's current wave? All waves is a DSQ. And this is, this is being modified. I will need a way to reset this. Okay. Uh, firstly, let me deal with the other stuff later. Uh, game speed, player money, player health, um, these variables, these can be reset. Um, when you reset the game, I'm going to just copy paste those in here. Uh, I may just put all the game initialization code in here and call it when everything's ready to go. Uh, but yeah, actually that's probably a better idea because then I will not have a uh, duplicated code and I will have a nice way to separate the, um, the gameplay variables from like the, the stuff that the game needs to run. Um, let's see, should I call this reset out or should I call it like initialize? 
I'll call it initialize because that's a, a more general term. It's a more general sounding term. Let's see, room underscore test. Uh, in the reset button, we're going to be calling game.initialize instead of game.reset. All right, and then uh, at the bottom, once everything is ready, like down here, um, we can initialize the actual game. And we'll have all of our uh, all of our methods uh, defined. We will have all of our all of our gameplay variables, so the player health and that sort of thing uh, defined. Um, the collision, I should probably uh, let's see collision grid. I'm going to want to reset that, I think, because that's going to be. Oh no, actually, I think the tower should remove their own collision when you restart the game, right? Towers. Oh no, that's uh, that's only when it comes to, to selling. That's not the destroy method. Well, we can remove collision as well. Uh, all towers dot. Remove collision. And um, if I were to reset the game, I, uh, the, if I were to start playing the game a little bit rather and then reset it, we should see one game speed being uh, being reset to one. We should see my, my money set back to what it was originally, health set back to what it was originally if anything leaked through. Um, I should be able to build a tower in the same place that I could uh, before as if there was nothing there. Uh, so I'm going to increase the game speed. I'm just messing with variables a little bit. And if I pause the game, restart, and try to build here once again, I can. All right, excellent. Tower collision is reset. And... All right, that is, uh, that is I think, all that I wanted to check here. Uh, player cursor over UI, really, those aren't really gameplay variables, but it's sort of related. Uh, if I were to reset the game again, the current wave would not be reset, unfortunately for me. Um, but we can do that next. Do I want to make this commit, like, multiple pieces? Not really. All right, waves. So, let's see. I'm going to make myself a new script. I'm going to call this, like, wave database. And I'm going to call this function uh, wave define or something like that. That's not the most, that's not the best function name I've ever thought of. But it's going to take a queue, and it's going to simply uh, it's going to simply populate the queue with with all this relevant information. Uh, this is not this is by no means the uh, the neatest code that I've ever written, unfortunately. Uh, what are you complaining about? Number of functions, uh, uh, number of arguments expected zero got four. You should not be expecting zero. You should be expecting four. What is a uh, Something is suspicious here. That's a bit of a better word for it. Um, let me see if the game just runs. If I uh, call the define all wave functions on here, and probably I should also dsq clear before I uh, before I run that. Why would this be complaining? There are, it is clearly taking the correct number of, of arguments. Anyway, uh, anyway, that should be, uh, really all of these, all of these wave variables, except for the, the all waves master list should be defined in initialize. So this can be, Right, wave active. That is another. That is another list. And uh, instead of uh, instead of recreating it every time you initialize the game, because that would technically be a memory leak, we can probably clear it instead. Uh, where is this used? How is this used? I think this just contains structs, doesn't it? Yeah, this just contains structs. All right. Uh, the waves themselves don't have anything that would uh, need to be DS destroyed, do they? Uh, ds list clear. 
Um, yeah, okay, so... We don't need to reset the waves because we're really just recreating their data. Uh, we're saying new wave and all that. Sounds like a cult. I should pick my words better. Uh, but the uh, all the lists should be appropriately reset here. And this is uh, this is another. This is going to be a step towards like creating different levels with possibly different uh, different waves of enemies uh, because each level could have its own wave data attached, and maybe define all waves could take a parameter which which determines um, what wave data gets loaded in uh, to any to any given map. Anyway, let's. Let's send in everything at once, because that's a bad idea. I love bad ideas. And let's build some towers, and let's uh, let's have some fun with, with different towers and all that. And then let's reset the game. Um, if I resume real quick, I have 76 money. I'm going to going down in health real soon, and I, I think that was the last wave. So if I restart the game, I'm back to 75 money. Uh, health is 10, wave number uh, not applicable of 8. And if I hit the spacebar, we should be restarting from the beginning without any issue. Um, game speed gets reset, doesn't it? Yeah, the game speed gets reset. Uh, any towers, any collision for towers that used to be there will be reset. Okay. Uh, that is looking good as far as restarting the game goes. Uh, let me just scan through with my eyes. See, these are some other variables, selected entity and all that, which I feel like kind of belong in here. Um, but, yeah, I'll, I'll put them in here. That's not going to hurt anything, is it? I don't think so. If I have code, which depends on, like, the order that variables are defined and in, in the creation of the, of the game here, that's, like, bad news. All right, the game starts fine. What happens if I have a tower selected and I pause the game and restart? That's just gonna, that's not gonna do anything special, right? Yeah, it, nothing out of the ordinary happened when I did that. What are some other edge cases that might like happen? I can't think of too many since um, it's really just selecting towers and deselecting towers is really the only like mode change within within gameplay. All right, I will commit that change. I have uh, written the initialize game function game can be restarted and uh, the last thing I want to do because this is kind of bothering me because I should have done it way back at the beginning is if you are in the update method if you are in um, gameplay mode if you are in pause mode rather uh, where would that be we should say if keyboard check VK Escape, gameplay mode, equals game modes dot gameplay. So if you hit the escape key again, uh, we will be back to, we will, we will be able, wow. We will be able to go back to regular gameplay mode and indeed, all right, that is a toggle. Great. We have a pause menu. This video shouldn't have taken too long, I don't think, because uh, it was pretty straightforward and nothing really bad happened that I had to bail myself out of, aside from a little bit of messing around with what was happening when, when things were being destroyed or not destroyed. Anyway, uh, that's going to be it for today. T uh, next time, next week, I almost said tomorrow, but this is not a daily series. Uh, next week, I think I'm going to be implementing a settings menu. So that'll include things like probably um, volume controls, although there isn't any sounds in the game yet. Probably I'll be doing things like game resolution so you can make the game smaller or bigger whatever full screen or not full screen um some other things like that i i may also uh, attempt to do accessibility settings i don't know as much about those as i'd like to uh, but i've got some friends who i will uh, who i will be questioning about like game accessibility and difficulty and all that sort of thing um probably at some point in the near future and um and then after that the week after that will probably be a main menu that may take multiple videos i'm not entirely sure yet but, I hope you all found that interesting. I try to post about two game dev videos a week, one of these and one tutorial tutorial. Um, if you want the code for this, look uh, for the uh, GitHub repository in the video description. And while I'm remembering, uh, this needs to be a commit, this needs to be unpause game. 
with the escape key. Uh, look for the zero point. What are we up to? 4-2 release. Week 42. Um, I have a Patreon, so if you want to contribute towards these videos being made, there'll be links to that in all the usual places. You can uh, see your name in the credits, get access to these videos a day early, see what my future plans are, and that sort of thing. Otherwise, subscribe if you want to see more, and I will see you all later. Special thanks to Kiara Elizabeth, Connor, David Key, Edward Holt, Emily Coyo, Halo Factory, Posho, Syndra Larson, Tusk, and Zenith for supporting these videos. If you want to see your name in the credits or to hear yourself shouted out at the end here, head on over to the Patreon page down in the video description to join the fun.